Diels Alder reaction. Um, we're going to talk about sections 14.4 and 5 in your textbook. Now, before I give you the general reaction, uh, I want to ask if you guys know about the Albrecht reaction. You see, Albrecht almost identified the Diels Alder reaction. By the way, Diels and Alder received the Nobel Prize in chemistry for the Diels Alder reaction, and I'm about to show you. But about 15 years earlier, Albrecht had run a reaction that it turned out actually produced what we now call the Diels Alder product of the reaction. But he misidentified it. He was working in another famous organic chemist lab, Tilly as in the Tilly tube, and he had produced a product that he did not expect. Uh, he was trying to do a Michael addition reaction, but he got some water in the system, ended up doing a diels alder reaction, and didn't understand the product, and it wasn't until about 15 years later that Diels and Alder figured out what it was, published it, accurately identified it, and went on to win the Nobel Prize. That's why it's very, very important that we accurately identify it our products. Now how do we do that? You learned that last semester with the spectroscopy techniques. Um, proton NMR, carbon NMR, mass spectroscopy. We also use things nowadays like x-ray crystallography and a wide variety of other spectroscopic techniques. Infrared, we're going to learn about UV in chapter 14. So this is not the Albrecht reaction it's the Diels Alder reaction, and they receive the Nobel Prize for it. First, the general reaction. As I promised, we'll look at the general reaction. In the general reaction, we have a diene of some sort. The ends can be connected, it can have all sorts of other things on it, but we have a diene and we have an alkene that typically has an electron withdrawing group. Now, the diene typically will have, it doesn't have to have lots of them, but it goes much faster if there is an electron donating group. So EDG is electron donating group, EWG is electron withdrawing group. And so when you have this plus minus, if you will, attraction, the reaction goes quickly. Now, this reaction produces a six-membered ring. With the electron withdrawing group, and if I had an electron donating group on there, it would go like this. Now, how does that occur? Well, it's this is a new class of reaction, so this is not a polar reaction. This is a class of reactions that we call concerted reactions, where the electrons all flow at once. In this reaction, you see these six electrons, and we're going to learn that those that flow of six electrons, we learn about benzene and aromaticity very shortly is this very special case. And because we have aromatic stabilization, benzene rings, aromatic compounds, have dramatic stability that's far beyond simple uh, predictions. And so it's a new class of compounds. This flow of six electrons in a cyclic ring produces then, you see this is going to give me the double bond that's here, and becomes this double bond and we form a six-membered ring. So if I go around that ring, one, two, there are my atoms, one, two, from the other partner. By the way, this one is called the dienophile. Okay, that is the lover of dienes. So it reacts with dienes, and we want typically that electron withdrawing group on it. And of course, then we have A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D in our product. Um, but of course, this one has a 
another product. It can form. So I showed you the simplest first. But what if I turned the bottle containing the electron withdrawing group upside down? Okay, if it were like this. It would react in the same sort of arrow pushing fashion, but it would produce a new product. So now here is one, two, and again, A, B, C, D. So you see the connection two to A versus one to A is different because I turned the electron withdrawing group upside down. And the molecules don't care. Um, they react both ways, although we can, we learn uh, things later in aromaticity. Coming from aromaticity, we can understand that this, which is called the 1,4 product, again numbering the ring, 1, 2, 3, 4, is the major product, and this one, 1, 2, 3, going around the ring, the 1, 3 is the minor product. Now, I'll give you one specific example of this. And there's going to be lots more that we're going to learn because there are lots of variations of this. It must have been very important for Diels and Alder to receive the Nobel Prize, of course. So a specific example is the reaction of isoprene, polyisoprene, by the way, is naturally occurring rubber, so isoprene is a very common compound. If we react that with methyl acrylate, Polyacrylates, common polymers, they're made from these acrylate derivatives. Of course, this, you predict, now makes two products. One where the dienophile, remember this is the dienophile, and here's our diene, reacts in the orientation I have it drawn. Then it can flip over and produce the other product. And so we predict two products here. One with the orientation as I have it drawn, but as you know, molecules are moving all around. They're not frozen in solution. They're flipping upside down and back and forth. And so there's another product here, and I seem to be running out of room, so I'm gonna try and squeeze it in. Hopefully that stayed on. I think you can see it, okay. So that is the first and the simple example of uh, the Diels-Alder reaction. Now, <clears throat> turns out that, so we have two different orientations there, uh, the 1, 3 and the 1, 4, depending on our substitution pattern. But there's actually lots more information that goes on in this system. So we need to look at a few more specific examples. <clears throat> Let's take now, a simple diene, we won't worry about uh, these orientations uh, up, up and down, one, three, one, four, because we now have a symmetrical diene. I hope you see that plane of symmetry. But if I react that with, for instance, something that has stereochemistry, so I'm going to add a substituent to my methyl acrylate. This is trans. Now, uh, uh, Nester. we have specific kinds of stereochemistry in the product. That is, this trans stereochemistry translates to this product. And of course, in this particular example, this is going to be a racemic mixture. Now, what does that mean? Well, I brought in for you the concept of chirality. 
So there are enantiomers. There's an enantiomer of the structure I have drawn. You should take it as an exercise to go and draw the enantiomer of this. <laughs> Convince yourself that it is actually an enantiomer. Now, there's one other piece of information that we need here. If we take the same diene and we react it with the other stereochemistry of this ester, we get a different product. Whereas here, the trans relationship in the starting material translated to a trans relationship in the product. In this dienophile, the cis relationship translates to a cis relationship of the stereochemistry in the product. Okay. Now, when we have this particular thing where one stereochemistry in the starting material relates to a specific stereochemistry in the product, and the opposite stereochemistry in the starting material relates to the opposite stereochemistry in the product. We call this a stereo-specific reaction. Okay? That is, the, the stereochemistry is a consequence of the mechanism. Okay. Now that's in contrast to a stereoselective reaction. Now a stereoselective reaction might give you 100% of one stereoisomer of the product and with the alternative starting material, it might give you 100% of the stereo, same stereoisomer. Now that's 100% stereoselective, but it's not stereospecific. Stereospecific is when opposite stereochemistries of the starting material produce opposite stereochemistries of the product. And of course, you can't predict that with just one piece of information. You have to do the experiment to get both. Now, this goes back to the mechanism I drew a minute ago, where the bonds formed, two sigma bonds, two pi bonds rearranged, and we form a new pi bond here, all occur simultaneously. That is concurrently, at least for our class. Um, what's the stereochemical relationship between the trans and the cis products? I talked about the enantiomers here. There's their enantiomers, but the relationship between these two, they're diastereomers. So if you don't recall that, diastereomers are stereoisomers that are not mirror images of one another. So review those concepts, enantiomers, chirality, diastereomers.